visibility within the black box and what that computation that happens in the learning algorithms mean to humans. Um, one very simple reason is the following. Whenever um, a deep learning algorithm, machine learning algorithm comes out with um, a prediction or, or, or does the classification, um, uh, unless that is explained in terms of uh, the, you know, in, in, in the form that is understandable by the expert, the user, um, it is not going to give you the visibility. So when a uh, clinical uh, person, medical practitioner uh, is given a recommendation or, or a suggestion uh, or a possible decision they can make based on data analysis using deep learning, uh, unless it is framed in the context of uh, the medical practice and the protocols, it doesn't mean anything. How do you how do you make the uh, deep learning algorithm understand uh, the way a medical practitioner thinks? You have to have the user model. You have to have the knowledge of the uh, um, that particular protocol incorporated into the learning to. Uh, make it meaningful. So that is the fundamental. If there's one takeaway I'd like to share with you is that one. Um, and uh, like, uh, you know, any major activities, this is a team of and especially Manas and Koshik and whole variety of people who work with me on um, uh, knowledge infused learning uh, are the members. There's a one slide introduction to the AI Institute at the University of South Carolina. Uh, in the center are a whole bunch of um, uh, AI-centric uh, research that uh, AI Institute is doing. And on the outer side, you can see that um, uh, we have we are very much into translational research. So uh, practically everything we do have applications working with the domain expert, real world data and such that allows us to make a larger impact. Um, and you can see a whole bunch of uh, area that we work with. We already have collaboration with uh, majority of the colleges in the on the campus and many outside. Outline is to uh, and in fact, given that um, um, I only have about thirty minutes to talk, I am going to have to kind of skim through many of those things. Uh, I will try to uh, you know share the salient parts of it. Knowledge graphs. Uh, I don't think that there is need to introduce here ontology knowledge graph. They are cousins and they are making huge impact. This is a pattern that we filed in year 2000, well before um, the famous 2001 paper on semantic web. And this was awarded in 2001. And you can see on the right hand side what you know looks like a knowledge graph. Uh, another word we had used was world model because the and ontology both were used in the patent. Uh, the reason is that the world was not quite ready for ontology. The commercial world was not quite ready for that. So we used the world, world model. Now that has become starting to become popular also. Uh, but at the representative level, it's really nothing different, not at all different from knowledge graphs. And so here we developed uh, knowledge graph uh, driven uh, techniques for browsing, searching, profiling, personalization, advertisement and such. And there's a link to a, an article that shows you uh, what we did then and what I saw uh, through 2013 and 14 when Google came out with semantic search and uh, how we had already, uh, you know, the, the, the relationships of between the yeah, to to efforts and how uh, things have changed, if at all. Okay. What happened? Oh, for some reason, it kicked on. Uh, all right. Um, there is a proliferation of knowledge bases, knowledge graphs, uh, and uh, some of them are general purpose, and many of and others are uh, specific. Just in one domain of healthcare. I listed some of those that are either the knowledge graph or source for knowledge graph. In enterprises, knowledge graphs are so widely used. Um, one of my students uh, last uh, 2019 uh, went to the research group in Amazon. He called back uh, in a couple of months and say, he said, Dr. Seth, I can't find a single project around me that is not using knowledge graph. And so this, this is, uh, there is a huge growth of knowledge graph um, I'm a bit surprised that this was not used before that deep learning became popular, but now um, this, this has become very symbiotic. 
I'm reminded of the um, uh, panel uh, at the uh, AI debate two, uh, whole, um, recently uh, organized by Montreal AI, uh, where they talked about uh, role of knowledge uh, in in the in the AI. Uh, here I'm showing you uh, empathy is a knowledge graph that my team developed uh, uh, for um, disaster. On the right is a knowledge graph that uh, this is from my third company I founded, uh, uh, which is on health uh, uh, care related uh, area. And this is a deep knowledge graph uh, related to healthcare. Um, and this is a company that I'm uh, working with now called Imbibe uh, uh, and a knowledge graph uh, for education. So these are for real. This is a paper that we recently did with Hemant uh, uh, and Valerie. And uh, this is, uh, you know, putting out the fact that knowledge is not only about capturing the domain, but at the end of the day, AI systems are there to serve human needs. And humans are co complex beings. And with that, you know, with human, we have social norms. We have individual, uh, you know, uh, priorities and, uh, uh, our own culture. Each of the each of us have our own cultural, uh, you know, leaning. Uh, we have common sense knowledge, and we have, uh, um, you know, so domain specific knowledge that we usually uh, focus on is only one aspect of it. Um, and I still focus mostly today on not domain specific knowledge, but there is a, a whole body of work that needs to be done for the agents and for the AI systems to really understand the master. The master is the human that they are supposed to serve. Uh, so there is a theme that I had, uh, uh, you know, talked about called computing for human experience, uh, not that um, uh, computing, not the AI for that replaces human. Uh, that has been my interest. Um, at the end, uh, I, I I love to do interdisciplinary work and I love to learn from other disciplines, particularly cognitive science, neuroscience, and uh, behavioral economics. And um, uh, in cognitive science, this concept of top brain and bottom brain has been, uh, you know, well discussed. And um, in the um, AI, uh, the first generation of AI looked at the symbolic, uh, and also called symbolic AI, uh, you know, focused on reasoning. Uh, and uh, the arrow on the bottom is about uh, statistical AI. And um, uh, I think, um, at least in my way of thinking, knowledge and experience are the glue. Uh, they have to come together. We all have heard about neurosymbolic computing, um, uh, but uh, and there, are, there are many ways to it. But I feel that the uh, neurosymbolic computing achieved through uh, use of knowledge to intermediate and connect the patterns and perception with uh, cognition and uh, high-level abstractions uh, is critical. So. Um, now, there are many, just in the area of NLP and NLU, there are many particular, many reasons for using knowledge graph, they're listed here. And you know, today I will just touch upon a couple of them that are in this gray, uh, in, in the brown, uh, you know, color. And um, um, uh, in the uh, NLP and NLU, for example, uh, I'm showing you uh, a paragraph in a news article. Uh, and as you think about trying to understand this paragraph, you're going to find that um, uh, a bunch of knowledge from driver sources will become important. So the DBpedia, for example, can help you get the categories, subcategories, and properties in DBpedia. Uh, but then, um, and, and, you know, and then you can get uh, to the entities like uh, individuals uh, presenting or uh, men are showing influenza or, you know, the phrases like that. But you really want to understand it. Uh, so there's natural language processing, but natural language understanding. And if you want to get to that you part, understanding part, you can't do without uh, having a knowledge uh, to support you, uh, acting as a trellis on which you can hang your ideas. So influenza like illness on the left-hand side is not recognized, but influenza like illness is, uh, you know, concept. Uh, that is well uh, recognized, um, you know, on the right hand side, and that is very important. Uh, there is a specific meaning of high proportion uh, that is also important. And then once you start incorporating uh, snow med city and uh, other medical knowledge, 
uh, you are going to uh, get more insight and more understanding of more terms and more specific understanding of those terms. And when you are all done, then you'll be able to get a, a whole bunch of entities and, and relationships which I did not talk about that will help you, uh, you know, uh, annotate the data and hence later on support the semantic search and uh, better ways of finding the data and so on and so forth. Um, and in the deep learning, um, you know, um, uh, we are going with this more and more, um, you know, getting out more and more subtle semantics, uh, subtle, subtle rather patterns from the data. And uh, after GPT-3 with 175 billion, now we are talking about a trivial, trillion uh, parameters, uh, you know, that Google has worked on. And um, what is happening here is, uh, it's first of all incremental, but uh, fundamentally, um, it still is not getting you to um, uh, things that are very, very important uh, uh, for uh, real applications. And for me, uh, they are um, ability, you know, dependability, veracity, reliability, verifiability of uh, what you're finding for, by using the system, contextualization, abstraction, and personalization. These are the key uh, features that I can think of for the kind of applications I want to develop. Uh, this, um, you know, um, uh, deep learning is uh, by itself not helping me out enough. And so I have to find a way to, um, you know, merge, uh, to combine deep learning with uh, knowledge graph uh, to, to make uh, understanding more detail, more, and support those kind of features that I talked about. Um, uh, here, uh, you know, uh, there are uh, good techniques to, for example, take vast amount of data and then create those clusters. But then by incorporating into those clusters, specific um, you know, knowledge about the domain. In this particular case, I'm talking about opioid drug knowledge graph. Uh, I'll give the citation. Uh, you are able to see within that with specific uh, labels that are meaningful through their association with other labels that you can find in a knowledge graph. Uh, a long time ago, I talked about relationship at the heart of semantic web. So this is not just entity, but relationships that are also very important. The other thing is that there are, uh, you know, the systems uh, that we build, uh, the AI systems are, uh, they come with a lot of bias. And in particularly the top three are the ones that um, uh, I think uh, uh, are the ones that I can address better once I incorporate knowledge uh, in conjunction with the deep learning algorithms. Um, and uh, it's very hard to deal with this bias if I don't, uh, you know, have the knowledge as my partner. Um, and now let's uh, look at semantics, association of meaning with data and other things. This is a uh, definition I used a long time ago and many people have used it. Um, take a simple example of question answering. Uh, and the uh, question is, does pers this person have addiction? Answer is yes, using sequence to sequence model, and that happens to be correct. But you take this particular text now, and you ask, uh, you know, does this person suffer from depression? While the machine will give you uh, yes, uh, in reality, it is not, uh, you know, the answer is no. And uh, what you need to be able to do is to, um, you know, reason, as I've shown here, why. A manic uh, episode is a characteristic of uh, anxiety and not depression. And the person talks about manic episodes and, and so on and so forth. Um, these kind of things are necessary um, to be able to correctly answer this question, which, uh, you know, your uh, very large deep learning algorithm can't do. Uh, in some cases, you have to do multi-hop reasoning. Uh, you know, uh, what uh, can cause uh, forest fire and uh, from those question answers, uh, possible answers. You say uh, static realistic because you can reason as uh, I've talked about there. Um, uh, so uh, adding knowledge to data intensive learning, uh, you know, provides you both performance and interpretability and, uh, and, and explainability. Now, this is already being done to some level, but not so overtly. So uh, what is happening is that uh, in some very, very um, uh, spectacular uh, effort like AlphaGo, uh, there is um, 
uh, knowledge, uh, you know, game related knowledge that is uh, incorporated, um, you know, in terms of what 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 constitute good steps. And then you can use using Monte Carlo tree, so you know, you can you can create an explanation of why uh, those steps worked um, in in a game. Uh, so, but but this is still not you know this is still a baby step, uh, and the, uh, the kind of knowledge infused uh, in corporate here is very very basic, uh, and and it's okay it works for game, but in the real world for many other things, um, the knowledge continues to change, so you need to keep in mind uh, it's kind of a little a next step beyond what uh, AlphaGo was. You can find in AlphaFold another major success story. But um, uh, in this particular case, uh, uh, taking the uh, you know information from protein DB uh, provided provides for so leveraging noise from protein data bank uh, enable uh, you know this system to perform very well. Um, but uh, still, additional steps for knowledge infusion required because why this is the best structure for a particular purpose. So so this this one comes out with a valid structure that follows physics and chemistry but why is it a, a you know a good functionally good uh, result uh, for example if i'm applying this to drug discovery then uh, a valid drug molecule is the first step but then saying we whether that drug molecule uh, a candidate for drug has the right solubility or right um, uh, a toxicity profile are the functional thing and the relevant knowledge have to be brought in to find a uh, molecule that better meets the uh, you know the need for uh, you know for future work for, for, the, for uh, that the scientists want in, in drug design so uh, for protein design drug design uh, we've been able to reach a stage where we can say physically chemically uh, this is the value structure and we can do that very efficiently for a vast space but from there to get something meaningful and use really useful for application we still need to do more and i think that for that what you need to have is knowledge from uh, you know outside here is an example of a uh, 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 contextualization personalization uh, you know uh, you ask um, uh, alexa you know how is the weather today so the weather is this kind of thing enjoy your play um, but if uh, if you know that the patient is uh, uh, you know um, uh, it's an asthma patient and has ragweed pollen. Then the system can be a lot smarter and uh, uh, find out, uh, you know, uh, what is the pollen today. Uh, this is available through web service. It's not that hard. And then uh, it'll reason to say, yeah, weather is good, but uh, you know, you could, uh, you know, you could have, uh, you know, you have this phenotype. You have this potential system that can have, that has been uh, shown to occur. Uh, then uh, you know, take sure, make, make sure that you take your um, rescue medication with you. Um, uh, then um, uh, let's see. Uh, here's a very another interesting example. Uh, on the right hand side, uh, you, you you see um, uh, the speed uh, on a road network through sensor data, road sensor network. And on left hand side, you see the tweets that are coming in. And I want to be able to connect. Uh, these two um, modalities so that i can use twitter to explain why uh, the traffic might be slow for this particular time um, and um, uh, if i want to connect these two different modality uh, at, a, at a pixel level or at a, at a signal level or statistical level there's hardly anything i can do the, yeah I can, I can create a vector from both of them and merge them that will not give me anything interesting I need to uh, take it to the higher level of abstraction. In this case, um, you know, uh, I, I have an understanding that Golden Highway at Viking, uh, you know, uh, robots in Devland uh, is um, a location. And around that we have, uh, oh, there's overturn truck and now I can uh, use as an explanation. But connecting this kind of multimodality is again, uh, I use deep, uh, you know, machine learning or deep learning, but without these things is impossible. Here it shows a pipeline of uh, you know uh, knowledge graph in NLP where that uses uh, uh, knowledge graph and uh, some of our work uh, along each of the steps of pipeline. The thing that is of uh, you know huge interest to us is uh, really um, uh, combine symbolic AI with statistical AI, and and see the benefit of that. So um, 
uh, in this knowledge infused learning, um, there are many challenges uh, in deep learning uh, that are outlined on the left hand side and uh, I've given some reasons on the right hand side of why, uh, how we can address these. Uh, in, in, interest of of, uh, in interest of time, I, I, I'm kind of skipping or going faster. Um, let me um, uh, show you something interesting here. Uh, I'll make this comment. Uh, so uh, one of the area of what we, uh, 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 we address is uh, radicalization on social media. The interesting thing is that um, um, uh, if you try to understand the complex uh, area of radicalization, there are a lot of human dynamics and how a jihadi is convincing uh, a, a, a disenchanted youth in Western world uh, to join them is pretty complex. So uh, just doing it from analysis of data is useless. What we did was to take empirical work by a political scientist who said the critical factors are religion, um, ideology, and hate. And then we, what we did is to create the pipeline for uh, you know this this deep learning pipeline uh, uh, that um, analyzes each of these things with respect to the corresponding domain knowledge for. Um, uh, religion that came from Hadith and uh, Quran, and uh, it allowed us to distinguish between um, jihad used in the normal uh, positive religious mode versus jihad used by the jihadis, and very and then understand the nuances uh, of those um, because we had the knowledge for each of the domain we could do that. Otherwise, it's pretty much impossible. We come up with a uh, kind of a taxonomy of the different ways to bring in knowledge into deep learning. There's a shallow learning, there's semi deep learning, there is deep learning. The example previous I gave about uh, uh, radicalization it was the example of semi deep learning because it um, uh, took uh, you know uh, segments of the things and uh, infused at one step in the whole process. Um, uh, the, I have some models uh, at a very high level to introduce you the shallow infusion which is um, uh, embedding basically kind of things uh, so knowledge and data uh, embeddings are kind of combined uh, uh, semi deep uh, uses attention to bring in the knowledge at one layer and deep learning brings attention at different layers uh, and infuses knowledge at different levels of abstraction so it is a multi layer uh, kind of things uh, and there is a uh, you know paper that is available that gives you a lot of examples um, uh, here is a simple visualizations where on the left hand side you see the semi uh, you know the vector based representation of word in uh, you know tweet uh, using embedding uh, but then if you use knowledge graph or some knowledge you are able to bring uh, you know damaged infrastructure or affected population closer and, and that is where you know uh, that, that would be more meaningful uh, 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 you know insight that you can get from data compared to what you have on the left hand side uh, here in this case being able to uh, you know, um, more appropriately characterize these different clusters that you have. Uh, and uh, essentially, um, what I can find in EMR on the left and what I can find in social media on the right, um, uh, and combining them uh, is something that you can do using knowledge graph. This one is an example where you use a knowledge graph. Uh, one of the most important uh, activity in automated vehicles is uh, scene similarity detection. So here we show that um, we can, uh, collect the you know kind of aggregate the scenes that are similar far better by using knowledge graph than without and the same idea confusion uh, this is an interesting example one example i would like to discuss uh, um, so here uh, on the left hand side you see uh, data coming from different uh, reddits uh, uh, bipolar disorder reddit is the first one that data came from that uh, the third one is depression reddit and on the top you see um, uh, a different concept from the uh, medical literature that is used to understand uh, to, to get, gain clinical understanding of mental health. It's called DSM-5, uh, and that uh, you know helps me define, uh, let's say, uh, you know, uh, bipolar uh, disorder or uh, or suicide um, ideation. These are the terms on the top here, the, the concepts on the top here. You see, uh, SBI and SAD. So these are um, uh, various uh, conditions um, uh, related to mental health. And uh, you can see various texts here. 
but uh, understanding this text and really making relevant uh, inferences from this text uh, that are for 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 clinical decision making is extremely hard so what we are able to show is that um, in understanding that text we had to resort to use of multiple different knowledge sources uh, there is a suicide risk severity lexicon uh, there is a dsm5 lexicon that i mentioned earlier there is a drug abuse ontology that we have discussed suicide uh, sorry mental health and addiction often go together and then of course there is snowbed city kind of thing which has treatment information so different kinds of information we want to extract require different kinds of knowledge and um, what we were able to do is to take this um, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the, the the post and uh, machine learning but infuse the knowledge uh, as you see on the bottom and then we are able to create better label uh, and this um, essentially when you do what you're doing is to create a uh, uh, kind of matrix uh, on the left hand side is the uh, reddit content the content and the words from reddit, uh, uh, you know uh, content from different reddits on the left on the bottom you see a uh, variety of medical conditions described uh, in the uh, dsm on the right it is they are all listed there and then you are creating this matrix which is uh, in, in great gaining deeper semantics from the data and then what happens is that on the left hand side is your standard uh, you know model uh, and the right hand side you have the uh, model that comes by use of the knowledge graph and when you combine the two you are able to do much better for example there is a post here in bipolar subreddit uh, on the top but it is not about a bipolar disorder it is actually about depressive order and it is about we are able to make these kind of restrictions because we are we are, we are using knowledge in the kind of way i described so these are the major kind of things here is a very interesting graph you on the left hand side you uh, you know the false alarm rate is 0.3 with just use of lexical and syntactic feature, then you add more features, TFID, then you add contextual features, then you add DSM-5, you can see big jump from 0 0.13 to 0 0.04. Uh, then you add drug abuse ontology, uh, somewhat improvement already is very good. And then you add slang terms and other things and still do a little bit more improvement. So you can see how you can improve that. Uh, I do not think that um, this kind of improvement will just come uh, by just throwing more data at the problem. Uh, similarly, I have uh, we have some work on uh, combining this uh, knowledge infusion into uh, doing knowledge infusion into reinforcement learning. So, um, uh, in uh, the last part of what I will talk about here is that uh, 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 you know explainability is very important. It plays role in many of the important themes in explainable AI, uh, and um, uh, I I just going to give you. Um, uh, one example uh, that uh, using uh, a uh, you know model uh, here is mental health related. Is this mental health related? The answer is yes. Uh, then which mental health condition it predicts uh, depression, which is wrong. The correct answer is obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, so this is our baseline. And then what we did was here you see um, uh, an infusion of uh, that correlation matrix that I showed, right? So. Uh, using the DSM-5 knowledge graph and correlational matrix, uh, we were able to uh, then um, uh, enhance the um, learning method, and, and we predicted obsessive compulsive disorder, which is true. Um, uh, and one of the things that's happening here is that you are able to incorporate, you know, and, and, you know, the system is able to understand that uh, chaos in my relationship. Right, and that is often used in uh, this kind of medical, uh, uh, you know, uh, mental health related understanding, uh, or or get drunk, or is in, you know that takes you to addiction and uh, uh, drug abuse, uh, and then there's uh, intrusive thought. So so you are able to understand these kind of concepts, and that is that this one is related to symptom, and this one is related to treatment, and you know those kind of things um, that that association of the meaning with the content is what leads you by the way the other important thing is that you are able to then construct your explanation in the context of these kind of concepts that are in the knowledge graph without that you only have work characters and words and their statistics how can you construct a good explanation right so that is a fundamental uh, reason why knowledge is um, critical in creating explanation. Explanations for using user
human consumption and humans are going to understand those concepts very well so uh, in that but in the, in the street um, here i have a concept of health related behavior i have a concept related to HG, HB, uh, uh, lgbtq a concept of uh, you know drinking and i can bring that in in making these uh, uh, you know texts understandable and i can explain that it is because of drinking that this thing is uh, you know this is the outcome and not the other one um, uh, and uh, you know there is more here in, in we, we did uh, open ended interview between physician and um, uh, 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 and patients in mental health and uh, also use these uh, knowledge infused techniques to be able to uh, summarize um, uh, you know what is a 56 uh, sentence conversation into seven sentence conversation um, uh, and then uh, uh, there is one more interesting example um, uh, but this one is that knowledge is dynamic and um, we need to uh, you know have the uh, uh, you know our, our human knowledge continues to change as we learn more things the same thing has to happen with the machine so um, uh, anyway this one is about uh, covid and lockdown and decision making about lockdown uh, uh, in the interest of time i'm going to pass so um, here are some of the uh, you know uh, uh, sub areas uh, that that uh, our group uh, works on and uh, uh, there are many other uh, areas that uh, we are exploring uh, that generally involves knowledge infused learning in robotics cognitive science uh, self driving cars personal assistant uh, that's one of the big areas for us the point here is that basically um, you know in the past we have uh, survive with a uh, uh, growing amount of uh, human labeling effort um, and uh, you know through you know lead feature engineering and uh, whether you use deep learning to you know do that but now we are trying to take that towards this um, you know uh, area where with knowledge infused learning you have to do much less of the uh, human involvement you can use the existing knowledge and so on and so forth Okay, with that, I will uh, end so that there is at least five minutes left, I think.